So I'm uh, Rob Tennyson, the cementing architect uh, for the Big Wall Beauty Trust uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, then invited me to talk about uh, the uh, W3C web annotation specifications um, and uh, what we've done and, uh, and where we're going. So essentially, woohoo! We did it! Finally! <laughs> Uh, and by we, I mean everyone here. So the, uh, the work would not have been completed uh, this decade were it not for uh, the support of the community um, around annotation, um, particularly hypothesis, um, the I, I annotate community, uh, the educational community, the media, new media community. It, it uh, has been uh, fantastic. Um, so, Tim, Cole, Wade, please, Tim. Um, it was one of my uh, co-chairs for the work, uh, Benjamin Young, who I saw sitting in the back, way Benjamin, the co-editor uh, for the specifications. Um, so thank you to, to work with them, um, Takeshi, Kanai, and Sony, also in the working group. Uh, anyone else who I haven't seen already? Nick, standing, of course, way Nick. So, uh, thank you, thank you to all, Randall, here we go. Uh, thank you to everyone who participated, uh, we would not have gotten this far. So, for those of you who uh, were not part of the work over the last nine years, uh, what did we do? So, um, we published in February uh, three technical recommendations. So these are specifications uh, with the same um, status as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. So this is the, the highest uh, level that the W3C um, has. Okay, uh, um, the data model, which is how to express an annotation um, and how to format it using JSON. The vocabulary, which is the semantics, the meaning behind all of the features of the model so that it can interact with the data. And the web annotation protocol, which is how to um, transfer annotations between between systems, be they client and server or server server. We also wrote two working group notes, so these are less formal. Um, however, uh, no less important. One around embedding web annotations within HTML pages. So if you are the content creator and you do want to provide annotations that you've selected as being interesting and important to your audience, how do they become interoperable and useful? And one of the other aspects uh, that we thought was much broader than just annotations was how to select or describe regions of web resources. Um, and the state of the uh, of web resource. So we also published a, a note to say this is how you can use some of our technologies in other contexts. Uh, what else did we do? So uh, one of the requirements for getting through the specification process is that everything needs to be tested uh, and implemented. So we came up with more than 350 JSON schemas uh, to help the developers and product owners to test their implementation, uh, starting with uh, the broadest, is this an annotation at all, does it have a feature? I'm going to have to go quite quickly through these 350. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, We tested 12 implementations that claimed uh, conformance, um, which was uh, very helpful. Um, so, as you can see, mostly green, um, a few red fails for things that were required uh, in a couple of implementations. Yeah. The requirement for W3C is that there are at least two implementations for every feature, um, and as you can see, we have far more than, than that. So that was, that was also great. Uh, we used GitHub techie people in the room uh, for managing the process and for publishing the, the content. Um, so we track all of our comments and criticisms and suggestions as GitHub issues, and we got through 266 of them. Um, so if you go to GitHub W3C web annotation, uh, you'll be able to see everything uh, that we did. Um, we took the very conscious uh, and deliberate choice to do everything in public. 
uh, which, which worked really well. And um, as for the previous discussion, it's important for the domain. We also uh, engaged with some other W3C groups, um, some of which would be very interested in the, in the current discussions. Um, so particularly, we spent a lot of time working with the internationalization group. Uh, how can we ensure that annotation technologies are fully internationalized, such that if you uh, speak Swahili or Zulu or German or French or English, that you can still use the um, content that is being provided. We work with the social web working group. So this is another group that is, uh, was working at the same time as us in a similar sort of area. Um, and we uh, borrowed or used very gratefully some of their technologies. And their technologies are compatible with the work that we completed. Uh, so we were very happy that this was not a, an arms race uh, or a competition to see who can do it, but uh, a lot more collaborative. Security. Um, what are the security implications of annotating the web? Um, so we worked with the security group uh, to ensure that our specifications um, were not opening up holes uh, that people could drive the Mac truck of uh, uh, hacking through to get access to uh, protected content. Privacy, um, very important, particularly for annotation. Um, the distinction between uh, pseudonymity, anonymity, and full identity is important. Um, what are you giving up by annotating, um, and what can you expect to annotate? And critically important, um, as uh, Tim Berners Lee says, you know, the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. How are annotations accessible? Uh, what can we do to make them more accessible to people, both in the creating of them and the consumption of them? So, what didn't we do? Well, it seemed like we didn't sleep or get out much, but you probably don't care about that. Uh, <laughs> what, we, what we didn't work on was authentication and authorization. Uh, these are orthogonal concerns that apply to every single web resource that should be protected, uh, particularly if you need to create things in other people's servers. We didn't, well, we discussed but didn't formalize uh, groups or uh, user group modeling. Um, so this was. Very interesting. Um, however, the different requirements of different organisations didn't lend themselves to any single model that we could map out. We also didn't work, uh, given the constituency of Google Group, um, on browser level APIs. Um, so there was discussion around a find text API, which is essentially Control F or Apple F. Um, how do you find, in a better way than just the exact string, the text that you're looking for in a web page, such that you can then attach an annotation to it? Uh, so we came up with a draft, but when we shopped it around to the big browser vendors, there was uh, less engagement than we had hoped for. We also intended to do um, browser level annotation creation and uh, management APIs such that uh, developers wouldn't have to worry about browser extensions um, quite so much. Uh, we did not get through that either. So mostly those were set aside because of the constituency of the group rather than through a lack of interest. If the browser guys aren't there, we're not going to tell them what to do. So, uh, what now? Um, so the working group uh, formally closed in March of this year, um, and all of the issues uh, and uh, further discussion has moved over to a community group. Um, so for folks who are less familiar with the W3C, working groups are restricted to members who have paid up their dues, but community groups are open to everyone. 
So if you would like to participate and discuss how we can move this forwards at the sort of web infrastructure standards level, please do join the annotation, open the annotation community group. Um, that would be the, the forum for uh, where we can, as a community, um, make progress um, until we get to a new um, So, a little bit of history then. The community group was instrumental um, in the formation of the working group. Uh, at the time, we were the fifth largest community group in the W3C uh, with some 200 people. Uh, we were behind things like uh, the mobile web and the automotive industry. Uh, but beyond that, it's uh, certainly something which was seen as extremely important and, and clearly still is. So yeah, please do uh, participate. This is the opportunity to um, ensure that your voice is heard and that we get the richest and broadest uh, set of requirements and new spaces for any future work. So then, what next, if the community group is now? Um, so, uh, gathering and discussing any new requirements, uh, discussing the issues such as uh, groups that we've postponed for future work, um, and so on. So if we can find out uh, where the interest is, where people are, are excited to work, you know, we can then focus on, on those areas, make progress, um, and then propose uh, a, a new working group to get back into the standards track. However, community groups can also produce draft standards. Uh, this was particularly successful recently uh, with the Jason LD um, community group that essentially wrote the standard. The working group appeared, said, there's the standard, uh, we're done, and moved on. Um, so it's not that uh, community groups can't write specs, they just can't formalise them. So, um, with any sort of luck, uh, we could work together to build a uh, version 1.1 of the specifications that address uh, the issues that are of concern. And then finally, push that out to a new working group uh, in the future. So, that is where we are and where we're going. And I thank you very much for your attention. Um, I have a a New Year's resolution to never ask for questions because that implies that I'm somehow you know, expert and that's not, that's not true. Um, what I would very much like for us to do is to continue the discussion that we started earlier um, about how we can do this uh, together. So, thank you all.